This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today we're checking out Maltigo's interface because there's so much going on. Now you've already run your first data mine, right? If you've watched my last episode, which you better have. If you haven't, go back and watch it and then come back to this one. But today I wanted to show you some more information about how the interface itself works i.e. how to get around, how to select items, and what everything actually means instead of just clicking and not knowing what the heck we're doing. So first off, that entity that you had dragged and dropped into your graph previously, and if you want to see me do it again, I'll just choose domain and drop it over here. That's called the node. You can have multiple nodes on a graph if you want to, and you can select as many as you want by dragging your mouse around on them. So if I had paterva.com on there as a domain. I can also do this DNS name. So I can click here, I can click there if I want to choose separate ones, or I can also drag my mouse to choose both of them at the same time. I can also shift and left click to pick and choose, similar to using a file directory in kind of a way. You can also pan by right clicking and moving your mouse in a direction. So if I right click down on my mouse screen and then I can just move around on my mouse pad, I can move around like this. This is very handy if you have a huge graph going on with tons and tons of different nodes to look at. And you can also use your arrow keys to select one node, then another, then another if you wanted to. So I can choose the DNS name node, and then I can hit my arrow key and choose the next one to the left or the right and go back and forth in between them with just the arrow keys. Now I can also move around in the overview tab with the left mouse. Uh, the overview tab is this nice little window up here. It's very small, but if I left click and then I move my mouse around, I can easily get around my graph like that as well. And I can choose to focus centered on separate ones by clicking on my mouse on the different notes. And that'll move the graph back and forth to center whichever node I wanna look at. If you go to all transforms, you can see these little icons next to them. So transforms, again, that's how you're gonna run your data mine. You'll right click on your node, go to run transforms, click all transforms, and then you'll see a list of all the ones available that you can run. So next to these, you'll see these nice little icons. So one is for changing the options for a transform and the other is a link to an online wiki help page. So for example, I have a question about, let's see, I'll choose DNS names. So first off, we have this one. That's gonna give me a nice little blue highlighted informational button next to it. So it says, uh, this transform will try to discover various common DNS domains in a domain. So that's cool. I can click on that and I can get a whole bunch of different options that I can go through. It's very, very, very descriptive as well. So take some time in there to learn about all the different transforms that you have. And then if I go back here to all transforms and choose another one, so I'll choose email addresses, who is info. I can click on the globe and that'll bring up a nice little wiki page. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm able to pull up this nice little wiki page that gives me information on that transform called domain to email address. So another easy way to read all about all the different transforms that you can get. You'll also see more info if you just hover over the transform, you get that little blue box that gives you a description. And when you run a transform, a little progress bar is gonna appear at the bottom and it disappears when it's completed. If you wanna see what that looks like, I'll choose this one, I'll run a transform. Let's see. Okay, so pay attention down here along this gray bar and you'll see it appear, because it might go kind of quick. So I'm gonna hit that, there's the progress bar. When it's completed, it just dis disappears and you get whatever your node ends up being. Now, I'm gonna show you more after the break as far as what this interface means and all those strange little windows and buttons and things, but first, let's take a quick break. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky, which looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer crazy, crazy fast, like this week's favorite from 
Miradiv. We couldn't do the show without your support, and we love the scripts that you guys share in our Hack5 forums, like this Pineapple Auto Connect script. Of course, we couldn't do it without your support again, so we would like to thank you with something special. Use the coupon code SNUBS with any order from the Hack Shop for your very own signed Hack Tip stickers. Thank you so much for supporting the show. We are back with more Maltigo. So let's go ahead and move on to a button at the top. That sounds really exciting, right? It's this weird little steampunky button up in the left, left sidebar. Uh, this is called the Maltigo application button. So you're gonna notice a lot of average options under this menu, including new, open, save, all those fun things. You can also save graphs if you want to and share them with your peers. And that is a .mtgx is what it saves as. You can also import and export graphs if you get them from other people. And if you export all the data from a Maltigo collection, it'll convert into an MTZ file. And then you can share that with other Maltigo users as well. You can hit that little options button next to that, and that is down here. Hit options, and that's going to bring up a whole bunch of different options for you, specifically for your Maltigo account. So you can change everything in here from different proxies. You can set up a default browser if you want to. I can also mess with my files, choose Java options, which is pretty interesting. There's audio options if you wanna listen to the sounds that Maltigo makes. Uh, transforms, you can change options for those. Your display is customizable, and then you can choose to uh, set your updates to do automatically or not automatically as well if you want. Uh, there's a couple of other options up at the top as well in that toolbar, but most of them are pretty obvious, you know, you've seen them before, so I'm not gonna go through all those different ones. Uh, that's pretty much it for this week. I think I talked enough about the Maltigo interface, but I'll talk more about the different panels and whatnot later on next week. So let me know what you think, comment below, email me tips at hack5.org. I'm currently at DEF CON right now, so if you're checking out the show and you wanna see what we are doing over at DEF CON, check out our sister show, HAK5, over at hak5.org. And we'll have so much more great stuff just like this over there. I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Bye. I'm a ghost.